Hello there guys, how are you today and welcome to my review of the 2018 Azerbaijan Grand Prix which took place in Baku at the weekend. And now, what a crazy race that was won by a British driver, Lewis Hamilton. Lots of strategies, lots of overtaking, lots of actions, lots of crashes and most importantly, lots of controversy. So, let's get into it. So in order of the current Constructors' Championship, we're going to start with Ferrari and firstly, Sebastian Vettel. He was pretty dominant all weekend, he dominated most of practice, especially on Saturday. He, but he dominated qualifying, got pole position and ultimately he dominated the race until the second safety car restart. He had fallen behind Bottas who had kind of done an overcut and got lucky with the safety car. But at the restart, Vettel went very aggressive into turn one with cold tyres and locked up and that caused him to lose position to Lewis Hamilton and Sergio Perez in the Force India. Meaning, Sebastian Vettel only finished this weekend's Grand Prix in fourth place and has ultimately lost his lead of the World Drivers' Championship. Meanwhile, his teammate in the Ferrari, Kimi Raikkonen, had a challenging weekend but was still able to bring the car home in P2. Raikkonen was on for pole position, he was a couple of tenths up on Vettel in his final lap, but in sector 3 he messed it up at the final corner just before the really 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 long straight and it meant he only started the race in P6 and, and as a consequence of this, he was obviously starting in the midfield he ended up having an incident with Esteban Ocon, very similar to the one he had with Valtteri Bottas last year at turn 3 on lap 1. He obviously had to go um, into the pit lane to get a new front wing and probably some new tyres. But with the help of the safety car and some overtaking, he was able to climb back up to P2 and get a podium. Not a too bad result overall, but again, he was very fast this weekend even in comparison to his teammates, Sebastian Vettel, but if he's going to keep it going to be able to have some type of championship challenge, if Ferrari are even going to allow that, he is going to have to be more consistent, particularly on Saturday in qualifying. As I mentioned before, the race was won by the reigning world champion, Lewis Hamilton, but I think even he would admit he was pretty lucky to win this one. Ultimately, he overtook Vettel when Vettel locked up, and then overtook Bottas and Bottas got a puncture which I'll talk about very soon. So he really should have been in third place but just got very lucky. He didn't really make any proper overtakes on anyone in the race that I can recall unless they had an issue. And in general Hamilton still seems a little bit off the pace. He, 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 just seemed, he seemed a little bit away sort of. He couldn't really keep up with the Ferrari. He in normal conditions he would have been jumped by Bottas so yeah he was pr pretty uh, lucky this weekend but the only thing I want to say about Lewis Hamilton and I, I, I think even Hamilton haters would agree is that he showed some class by delaying the podium to go and speak to his obviously devastated teammate Valtteri Bottas but, which I thought was pretty classy and he didn't celebrate too much, maybe because he was in shock or maybe because he knew he was lucky. And he, he delayed the podium to go and speak to Bottas. But yeah, I think Hamilton was lucky to win this weekend. But you know what? In hindsight, he won't care. He's leading world championship. And he'll be hoping that Mercedes can sort out the issues they have before we get to the Spanish Grand Prix in a couple of weeks. Hamilton may have been the luckiest driver this weekend, but probably the unluckiest driver was his teammate Valtteri Bottas. Right, okay, he didn't manage to match Hamilton in qualifying. Hamilton out-qualified him uh, in Azerbaijan for the first time in a few races. But I would say Bottas outraced him. Yes, he stayed behind him in the first stint, but it looked like he was going to do the overcut on Hamilton, or at least come out in front of him, had, had the... Pit, his pit stop been done in normal conditions and okay obviously he did come in for, out in front of, of Hamilton but that was because of safety car so Bottas was very fast particularly in the race Vettel wasn't catching him despite having newer tyres so I think he was a particularly fast driver this weekend but with only two laps to go Valtteri Bottas 
ran over some debris which was left there from a previous incident, I, be I believe the incident between Magnuson and Gasly, which I'll talk about much later in this video. And he ran over some of that debris and got a puncture, giving Lewis Hamilton the win and leaving Bottas devastated with a DNF. You know what, he, Bottas could have easily have won Bahrain, but maybe that was down to him. He could have won in China, he was unlucky not to win in China, and exceptionally unlucky not to win the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. He should be leading the championship now, not Hamilton, or at least right up there. But I believe he's now 30 points behind Hamilton, and I would say Bottas has been one of the unluckiest drivers so far in 2018. Now for the part which I guess most of you have probably been waiting for. The civil war that has broken out between Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen, the two Red Bull racing drivers. They were pretty close to each other throughout the race and there was some, there was some pretty good wheel to wheel action right up against the wall between the two drivers. But they eventually had a crash on lap 40. In general the team were a little bit off the pace in comparison to where they were in China and arguably in Bahrain. But they weren't too bad. Uh, ultimately though, this weekend is going to be remembered for the big crash between Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen. So what happened? On crash on lap, the crash happened on lap 40. Ricciardo had, um, had somehow lost out to Verstappen despite trying the undercut. And he tr and on lap 40, when he was trying to overtake Ricciardo, when he was like, trying to overtake Verstappen, sorry, Ricciardo ran into the back of his teammate. And ultimately, I would say they both moved in the braking zone. Who was at fault? Tell me in the comments. But Stappen was weaving, but the car behind kind of needs to be careful, and he could have stayed on the outside, and he could, and maybe Ricciardo would have been able to get the position like that with warmer tyres. It's really disappointing considering that Ricciardo won the previous race for Red Bull to have a double DNF. It's really going to hurt them in the constructors' standings, of course. And yeah, it's controversial. You know, Verstappen did seem pretty rough all weekend. Of course, there's loads of attention on him. He crashed in the first practice session, and he seemed pretty close to walls. He had a pretty few, you know, close shaves throughout the race. And yeah, he seemed a bit on edge, trying, I guess, to prove a point, following the previous instance he's had in this season so far. But I guess the crash has to lead us to an important question. Will there be a restructuring of how Red Bull let their drivers race? They seem to be allowing their drivers to race, but it's not the first time the Red Bull drivers have crashed. Turkey 2010, anyone? Hungary 2017. You know, it's not the first time. And if they're going to win this year's Constructors, maybe they need to change their start a bit to go a bit more like Ferrari with a number one and number two driver. But ultimately, that neither driver is going to be happy with that. So, some really interesting times ahead in Red Bull, in my opinion. Arguably, one of the drivers of the day at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix was McLaren's driver, Fernando Alonso. Yes, McLaren did basically struggle this weekend in qualifying. I guess the long straight really didn't help them. But Alonso managed to qualify, I believe, in P12. And he had a bit of a tough race, though. He essentially was involved in one of the midfield collisions, I believe, with the one with Sorokin. And I believe one of the Renaults of, I think, Hulkenberg on lap one. And he had to do most of lap one, as you can see in the picture on the screen, with, well, just two tyres, with both his front right and rear right, right tyre completely gone, puncture. And amazingly, he got back to the pits, which was tough enough in itself, and he managed to continue the race despite damage to the floor of the car, which obviously affects the aerodynamics. And he somehow managed to wrestle that dog of a McLaren up to P7. Well done, Fernando Alonso. I think that was a fantastic drive. It shows why he is um, a world champion. He, he might become world champion again one day, although I don't know if McLaren is going to be the place for him to do it. Certainly not this season. But a fantastic drive, showing a never give up spirit, which I think is really important in Formula 1. And he is really a driver and a performance that young drivers must look up to. His teammates, Stoffel van Dorn and the other McLaren, in my opinion, also showed a kind of similar fighting spirit. 
Van Dorn seemed really off the pace the whole weekend. He qualified only in P18, which I believe is, which is his worst qualifying of the season so far. He had a poor strategy. He made four pit stops, and in general, he looked slow all weekend. But he still managed to get the car into P9, meaning double points for McLaren. And there's a reason for this. McLaren were quite clever in a way, because at the final safety car, they decided to put new tyres on the car to mean basically hot rubber, which meant he had a, one of the fastest cars after the, the final safety car restart, and he must have made for up five or six positions in those four laps. So pretty good fighting spirit there by Stoffel Van Dorn. He has shown his ability to overtake this season. He's done lots of it this year. But we haven't seen much of it on the live feed because, you know, he's at the back of the grid mostly. And I hope to see more Van Dorn in the next few races, to be honest. And I reckon he will soon be able to match Fernando Alonso in that McLaren. Just behind McLaren in the Constructors' Championship currently is Renault. They were running right behind the Red Bulls and were battling with the Red Bulls in the early stages of the Grand Prix. But Hulkenberg's crash, Nico Hulkenberg's crash ultimately may have cost him a podium if you consider what happened in front of him with of course the two Red Bulls crashing eventually and Vettel looking up and Bottas retiring. Hulkenberg could have had his first ever podium here uh, at the weekend but ultimately his crash into the wall which is simply his fault there's no other way of saying it it was his fault may have cost him a podium and, he, and that would have been a fantastic unexpected podium considering the gearbox penalty he had this weekend. On the other hand, his teammate Carlos Sainz was much stronger this weekend in comparison to the last few races and was certainly a lot closer to his teammate. And yes, okay, but Hulkenberg did have a gear penalty, gear box penalty, but he managed to get ahead of Sainz in the race. So maybe Sainz isn't quite matching his teammate quite yet. But ultimately, Hulkenberg crashed and Sainz didn't. That has to count for something guys I, I reckon and also Carlos Sainz maybe also his team cost Carlos Sainz a podium they had a poor strategy putting on the soft tyre which is the hardest compound tyre this weekend I noticed that's kind of confusing kind of backfired it took a long time to warm up in the cold conditions and it meant he had to start overtaking again from P12 in the last few laps he did brilliantly to finish in P5 but ultimately, I reckon the team cost Carlos Sainz and themselves a podium. But all round, despite Hulkenberg's crash, a pretty good performance by the Renault team this weekend. One of the results of the day was Force India's Sergio Perez scoring a podium. An unexpected podium, that is. And now becoming one of the most successful Mexican drivers in F1 history. Brilliant result for the Mexican driver. He is one of my personal favourites, but I'll, I'll leave that out of any uh, analysis. Force India did well with Perez qualifying in P8. Of course, he was lucky to get a podium with all the attrition rates ahead of him. But he kept out of trouble, unlike last year. And has done pretty well this weekend. He, has, he must be delighted. Force India have been struggling uh, this season so far. And I think they will still struggle a bit. But... This was an unexpected result, bring some happiness to the team. All round, pretty fantastic, and I still maintain Perez is a fantastic driver. He just needs to be in a top car, which I believe in 2013 he didn't have in the McLaren. And I think results like this, and he's had quite a few podiums with Force India, and of course Salba earlier in his career, shows he is a top driver, and I reckon he is going to hopefully get some more podiums in 2018. While his teammate Esteban Ocon, arguably in my opinion, was at fault with the incident between himself and Kimi Raikkonen on lap one. He, it was a 90 degree corner, Raikkonen was trying to get up the inside and ultimately Ocon didn't leave enough space. He was at fault for that in my opinion and it was kind of his fault that he was knocked out of this race before he even got out of the first sector. So yeah, a mix we can for Force India overall. They'll be delighted with the podium, but Ocon will obviously be very disappointed with his DNF. 
Another talking point coming out of this weekend's Azerbaijan Grand Prix is the ups and downs for the Toro Rosso team. So let's start um, with the downs. So in qualifying, Hartley had some damage and was going quite slowly in the middle of the track. However, it was a pretty fast part, part of the track where he was going slowly and he blocked Pierre Gasly, his teammate, who was at 200 miles an hour. This could have caused a huge crash. It, it could have had a Mark Webber style crash from Valencia 2010. It could have been absolutely crazy. Thankfully, Gasly had cat-like reactions and was able to drive around uh, Hartley, his teammate, but it did ruin his lap and ultimately caused a bit of an argument in the team. But thankfully for them, they were able to turn it around on race day. Brendan Hartley was able to score his first ever F1 point, finishing in P10, while Pierre Gasly had a strong opening to the race and climbed up to P7. But due to what ultimately the car's lack of pace, uh, at the weekend's Grand Prix, partly because of the Honda engine, of course, he fell back to P12. But ultimately, yes, a poor qualifying for the team, but a pretty strong race for Toro Rosso. And to get a point at this Grand Prix, of all Grand Prix, is pretty good for a Honda-powered car. And they'll maybe start to be optimistic for the future. And of course, Red Bull have opened negotiations with Honda to have them supplying engines next season. So obviously Red Bull are impressed with what Honda are doing with Toro Rosso and Toro Rosso are probably pretty impressed with what Honda are doing at Toro Rosso. Probably the most disappointing performance this weekend came from the Haas team. Supposedly at least they have the fourth fastest car uh, this season. This is at least what the media seems to believe but they were pretty terrible this weekend. Neither car got into Q3 despite being the fourth fastest car, and both drivers had shocking races. So where should we start? Roman Grosjean, he cr managed to crash, as you can see on, with the image on the screen, under the safety car. How on earth did he do that? Uh, his engineer came on the radio saying Ericsson hit him, but unless we're in Doctor Who with time traveling, that would be impossible, because Ericsson was quite a bit behind him, a good few car lengths, Drojon simply messed it up for himself. Pretend that was really terrible by Grosjean. I don't I've never thought much of him. In my opinion, certainly hasn't improved after this weekend's Grand Prix, that's for sure. Well, Kevin Magnussen is is also embroiled in quite a bit of controversy. Gasly has complained about his driving style, saying he was way too aggressive, pushing him against the wall. I have seen the video of this, I'm sure you've all seen it too. Magnussen was pretty aggressive, pretty dangerous, and maybe he has to calm down. And I guess if he was in a faster car, would we be maybe talking to him in the same, talking about him in the same way as we talk about Max Verstappen, very fast, but crash a lot, or very too just too aggressive? Can we compare Verstappen and Magnussen? Tell me in the comments down below. P9 in the Constructors' Championship are currently Salva Alfa Romeo, but their young driver Charles Leclerc was certainly one of the drivers of the day. He got P6, his first point in Formula 1. I know what you're going to say guys, you're going to say, oh he was lucky because there's a high attrition rate, but I would say you would be wrong if you said that. He got into Q2 showing he did have some pretty good pace this weekend, and ultimately he was around somewhere in the points. For the whole, the whole race. Okay, maybe he wouldn't have got P6 without the high attrition rate or the Red Bulls and Bottas. But I reckon he would have got one or two points. And he did have pace this weekend. This was a huge improvement by the young the young driver from Monaco. And I don't think it was a fluke. I don't know why he was so good this weekend. It'll be interesting to see if he can keep it up at the Spanish Grand Prix in a couple of weeks. But Charles de Klerk was fantastic. And he has John Grand Prix and we can finally see why Ferrari rate him so highly. While he, I guess, his teammate Marcus Ericsson was in the shadow of his teammate. You know, he, he did get a bit tangled up in the first lap incidents in the midfield. But ultimately also Ericsson only finished half a second behind, behind uh, Brendan Hartley who finished in P10. So there could have been a double points finish for the Salba team. 
at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, which would have been super impressive. So maybe there's been some progress there, or maybe they were just lucky. I hope they can keep it up at Spain, which is probably going to be a tough track for them with all the high downfalls. But it'll be interesting to see what they can do. And it's pretty cool that they're not rooted at the bottom of the table so far this season. Finally, we have to talk about Williams, who have finally scored some points in what so far has been a really disappointing season for them so far. So, so in qualifying, they actually did much better than people expected, with both cars getting into Q2 and nearly getting into Q3. And then in the race, Lance Stroll had, a, not a, and had another fantastic race, finishing in P8. Points for the team, four points for the team. They were pretty happy. He had a fantastic start to the Grand Prix. Avoided various incidents, which is really key in this race. And yeah, they'll be delighted. While Sirotkin retired on lap one. Arguably, I would say the incident wasn't his fault. I would say, um, I believe it was a Renault driver who was at fault. I believe Hulkenberg, in my opinion. But I think Sirotkin did also get a reprimand, which I don't know if that's fair or not. It was hard to tell, really, what was going on at the back of the field, or the midfield, even. So, yes, yeah, Sirotkin had a good qualifying, but ultimately retired on lap one. And I would say, arguably, it wasn't his fault. But, yeah, overall, a much better weekend for Williams, getting some points on the board, meaning all ten teams now have points in what is, seems to be a really unpredictable Formula 1 season, just how I like it. And yeah, some exciting times for the future, of course. I, I have a feeling they are going to struggle in Spain, a bit like how Salba may struggle in Spain. With the high downforce, I reckon they're going to be right back at the grid again. Back at the grid. But, you know, we can't tell what will happen. This is Formula 1, anything can happen. But yeah, Williams will be happy with their race in Azerbaijan. And will certainly be looking forward to the future. So yeah, that was the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I think you'll agree, pretty crazy one. I'm sure most of you watched it. Loads of discussion points. Loads of crazy results. Particularly Leclerc. And of course Hartley. And of course Stroll. So yeah. Pretty exciting. I can see this video has gone on now for a really long time. Thank you for watching. If you didn't click off ages ago. And I'll see you guys next week. For my preview of the 2018 Spanish Grand Prix.